All righty. Hi there, everybody. It's six o'clock. Welcome to our webinar tonight for parents. And I also know we have many employees who are with us this evening. I want to welcome you and just in a first, let me introduce myself for some of you who I haven't had the opportunity to meet. I'm Candy Singh, and I am the proud superintendent of the Fallbrook Elementary School District. Uh, I've met many of you over the years that I've been here as your superintendent, and some of you I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, but I'm happy to be here tonight. I wish we were all face to face and meeting together to celebrate the end of a school year, uh, but we still are celebrating the end of a year and one in which it is not what any of us expected, uh, but we are so proud of nonetheless of our students and our staff, our teachers, our leaders. Uh, nothing could have really prepared us for what we've been through for the last several months. Um, and I'm really proud of everybody. Um, and I'm proud to be part of the team. So thank you for taking a minute this evening to join us. Um, I want to start by saying how much, much we've missed you. <laughs> and we've missed your kids and you know we all went into the teaching profession or to working in schools because we want to make a difference for children and their families and for the over 30 years that I, um it's that daily face-to-face -face joy we have of seeing children in the classroom and seeing really motivated and inspiring adults working with them um, so this has been hard we know how hard it's been for you at home, and it also has been for us. Um, but as I said, I'm so proud of the challenges we've overcome so far and what I know that we're going to do together. Um, so I want to just, and I also want to mention that we know how much you've missed your teachers. Um, there's never been a time where teachers have been honored and respected as much as they are now in this world. Uh, we all know um, how much we love and respect our teachers, but I think that's been magnified even more. And watching what our teachers have accomplished with your children has been remarkable. And we are so grateful to what they have done to many of them taking care of their own children running around and home Homeschooling have simultaneously been working with your kids. So um, we know you've missed your teachers, and so have we. So we want to extend our, our gratitude to you, families and parents and grandparents and guardians. We want to thank you for everything that you've done to support your children at home. We recognize how hard this has been to be your child's teacher too. And I especially want to extend my gratitude to all of the employees who are on this call right now. Uh, we know that this has been an incredible challenge, but we're just blown away by the, the optimism and the hopeful attitude and the can do, I can do anything approach that you have taken um, as employees in our school district. And we want to just really, um, the governing board and I, we want to extend our gratitude to all of you. So tonight, everybody, I, I know it's a busy time in a family's life and, and, um, and you probably have lots of things you're getting ready to do or just getting done time and all of those things. But tonight I wanted to just spend a few minutes with you to give you some insights into the things that we're thinking about as we begin to plan for next school year. Um, you, I know many of you, you're very aware a virus and pandemic has impacted our world and um, in all the ways that that's true and particularly how it's impacted schooling for children in our country. Um, it's a challenging time for us because we don't really know for sure what's coming, uh, but we do know that we are going to have a plan. And I wanna tell you a little bit about the things that we're thinking about and the considerations that we're making to really think through the challenges that we may face and the hurdles or obstacles that may come. Um, but 
with thoughtful planning, with a lot of really smart people and input from you as our families, we're gonna work very hard to make good decisions for your children and uh, for our employees. So I wanna tell you a little bit about that and not keep you on the line too long. Um, so I wanna start here. We know that this pandemic is evolving rapidly in our country and there's great variance across the country in the way that the pandemic is impacting communities. Um, we do know that we, we can't predict with any certainty today uh, what will uh, happen with school operations in a K-12 setting um, and the time frame that it'll occur. Um, one, of the, one of the frustrating and challenging parts for us as school leaders is the moving target that this um, every day it seems we wake up and we hear different thinking and evolving guidance and so we are in a planning mode of preparing for a range of possibilities that could happen um, because we do have some assumptions about the things that will be true when we come to open school in august and so I'll share with you the, the the five big kinds of high level kind of starting points that we're considering things that we're assuming will be true when we come to open school in august and i'm not going to spend too long this is just kind of a big i give you it some insights into things that we're considering uh, so that you understand where we're coming from and what we're planning for uh, as we move forward so the first area is in in the public. We know that the threat of the, this virus is going to remain among us until a vaccine is widely used in our country. And we know that that could be as long as 12 to 18 months. We've been seeing obviously some encouraging signs about vaccines being developed, but we know that until vaccine is widely used, uh, that this threat is going to continue to be um, a part of our, of our daily lives in one way, shape, or form. Uh, we also can expect that we would have a second wave of infection, and it is predicted that things could be worse uh, during flu season. Um, and that may result in periodic school closures during next school year. We also know that children and staff members with significant health conditions will be vulnerable to this. So our emphasis must continue to be on teaching and reinforcing prevention behavior, as well as our commitment to frequent uh, cleaning and disinfecting of our schools, which we began very early, even before we closed school on March 13th. Um, and those are gonna be practices that are gonna be put in place again in our school district. Okay, the second area that we're thinking about and things that we think about are related to the operations of our schools. We know that when schools are permitted to open, it's very likely that we're going to be making modifications that are going to be putting limits on the size of groups that are together at any one time. We can also predict that social distancing required in settings in our schools as, as part of the guidelines from public health and the CDC. Um, and then we anticipate some kind of need for proactive screening of staff and potentially visitors for symptoms. The, the, the school operations um, part of the planning that we're doing related to group size and social distancing is, is, is very impactful. As you know, um, schools of six to 900 students, which 950 students in our district, um, those are large groups. And so we are going to be, we're thinking carefully through what will likely be, uh, need to be modified based on the guidelines from public. So school operations. Uh, we uh, next are considering the impacts of what has happened and the impact on what it will mean for us for next school year. Uh, we know that we are looking at a significant cut to public schools in California. That's true across the country. In California, the current proposal is an almost 8% reduction 
to the funding for public schools. That reduction in funding combined with the kinds of changes that need to be made in order to have students and staff return to school safely, that is a, a difficult combination. Uh, we know that we are going to face increased expenses uh, due to the structural changes that will likely have to be made uh, in the additional support services that may be required. So this is of special concern to us, uh, a reduction in funding at the same time we're going to be experiencing the need for increase in costs. Th this is a concern for us, but it's one that we're working hard on right now. Uh, we have some really good ideas and plans that we're ready to put in place so that we will be um, moving into the new school year confidently with a sound budget and the ability to provide need. But an 8% per percent cut is difficult. Uh, we're still in the early stages of the budget process in California. That may change. Many anticipate that it may not be as high as 8% reduction, but we'll have to wait and see. The other part that impacts our budget is our enrollment. We can't anticipate a decline. We are already uh, seeing that in our school district uh, and across our county. As we all know, um, it's, a very, it's very expensive to live in San Diego County. And we can anticipate that when you see a level of unemployment at the, at the rate that it is, um, in a place as expensive as it is to live here, we anticipate that we will see families moving away from this area. Um, we also know that parents will likely, some will look to distance learning options for their kids. Um, and in some places that could result in declining enrollment. And in a minute, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about some of the things we're considering, but those on our own school district, um, and I'll tell you about that. So um, enrolling in 100% distance learning, and that's going to be the, the comfort level that many of our families have. We're going to have those kinds of opportunities as well, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute. All right. We also know that we could be looking at decreased attendance, and if we have students or staff who may miss two weeks or more of school uh, due to um, the virus or flu, um, and we also know that we could be seeing staff or students required to stay home if they have symptoms. Um, and that we know and recognize the need for temporary employees and substitute teachers, given what may happen with people becoming sick. So these are all uh, economic impacts to us and they're things we're planning for right now. The next area I want to share with you briefly is the educational impact assumptions that we're making. And we won't spend like a lot of time here, but I do, we do know, and we're thinking very carefully, um, our kids and the potential learning loss that many of our students have experienced. And we are thinking carefully about how are we going to get kids back to school and into programs and support services that help mitigate some of those learning losses. Uh, we know that many of our kids will begin the next school year with de deficits in their learning. We know some kids will be fine and, and, and have made nice progress while they've been at home. And we know some children haven't. And we are going to be prepared to support our students as we always have in that manner. Uh, but it's even more profound now and and it's something that we're thinking about and we're we're really concerned about and we're going to be having plans for that as as well and last but not least in some of these assumptions that we are going into our planning with are the social and emotional impacts that we know that this time has had on, on many of our kids and 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 often and sometimes our employees uh, we know that fear and loss and you know just the disconnection that our children and our students have had from their friends and some of their relatives and loved ones has has been very hard on people 
I can tell you in my own personal life um, with my own children, my parents who are high at risk um, in my family, it's been, it's, it's really taken a toll. Um, unemployment, a loss of jobs um, in my family, in um, many of the people I know. I, I am experiencing this firsthand and as, as I know that you are. And this is one of our biggest concerns and we know that this is a, an incredible and important priority for our board as well. Um, we know that this time has really been overwhelming for folks and particularly people that have pre-existing mental health concerns we know statistically and and if you and some of the research that's coming out now out now about increases in some of the challenges that families and face in substance abuse and child abuse and some of those other things these are very real we know that this time has taken an impact in that way and that is of concern to us and we need to be planning for uh, supporting our children, our families, and our each other with, with those kinds of things. That's always been a priority of our district and of our governing board, and we're looking carefully at how do we add more counseling services to our schools as an example next year, because we know how important this area is. Uh, we also know that some of our social distance um, requirements that we have been asked to abide by and we anticipate will continue to uh, in our, it's going to, it's, it's going to challenge us in a way to engage our children the way we like to uh, in big groups, in athletics. Uh, for our older kids, performing arts, some of the extracurricular activities that we're so accustomed to and ways that we engage students. Uh, we know that those things are going to be suspended for some period of time. And so those are all challenges we face that we know impact the social emotional well-being of our students. And we are planning carefully for how we can mitigate those impacts and help kids feel loved and connected to each other, to their teachers, and to their schools again when we come back. So it's a really big part of our thinking and very top of mind in the planning that we're doing. So those are the five kind of broad areas that we're paying attention to. It isn't all that we're paying attention to, but it is much of what we're paying attention to. And um, I wanted to just start with that to just give you a, a broad sense of opening our school district and opening our schools again and all the things that are involved to get our kids safely back to school. So our planning is focused on creating a continuum of learning environments, of all the possibilities of what could happen and thinking through all the things that would come uh, that's in, that is involved with, with opening our schools again. So as I move into this, um, I want to start by saying that we know there is nothing more important to us than the health and safety of our students and our employees. And we know that that's true for you as family, as parents, and as guardians. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the, a, a continuum of learning environments that we're thinking about and planning for. And as you get, uh, as we get more guidance and we're moving along the planning process, things will start to become more clear throughout the summer. So as I am going through some of these things, point your um, attention to what should be at the bottom of your screen where it says Q&A. And while we don't have the opportunity to right now to take live questions and answers from you, I want you to know that I really, I want you, if you have a question or a comment or something that you wanna share with us as I continue through here, I wanna encourage you to use that Q&A box and ask, ask your question and Include your name if you would like to, you don't need to, but we're going to be 
gathering all of your questions and your comments, and we will sort them and kind of combine them and answer your questions following this webinar and um, create what would be a, um, a, familiar, a, a frequently asked questions kind of document that we'll post on our website. And I'll talk to you also in a minute in a way that we, the other ways that we would encourage you to communicate with us. So as we move forward, if, if, if some of the things that I'm gonna share with you, you have questions or comments about, please use that little Q&A box at the bottom. All right, so let's keep going. Let me say it one more time. Nothing is more important to us than the health and safety of our students and our employees. We serve about 5,200 students direct and almost 800 employees. And that's a lot of folks. That's a, those are a lot of human souls to be responsible for. And seriously, we always have, and we will be moving into our planning in that way. Um, so I want to share with you, this is a graphic that I've created for you to help just maybe kind of summarize the, this continuum that we're talking about so that we have the opportunity to be flexible. And as things change over time, which we can fully unpaid that they will, we need to have a, a continuum of scenarios that we are prepared to deal with as we open up the new school year. So on the left-hand side of your screen, we can see that we know that there's going to be a time when 100% face-to-face, where all students return to school, um, is going to happen. Um, but we can anticipate that that's not going to happen right away, and not nearly as fast as we would like it to. Um, and that's going to be based on state and local requirements, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. If you go all the way to the other side of the continuum, we know that and can anticipate that we are going to have to have structures that where all students are at home with distance learning should schools be asked to close again. Almost all schools are planning for that scenario as well uh, because it, is, it has been anticipated that that will be part of what we're doing. Then, in, so from those two extremes, we, we know that in between those two is a combination of the two, which would be a blended learning uh, format or an environment for your students. That is a combination of face-to-face -face learning as well as remote learning with rotating schedules to maintain social distancing um, as will be what we anticipate will be asked of schools to do. Uh, that would mean that what would it look like if we could only have 50% of our students coming back to school at any given time? Um, and, and what would the schedule look like? Uh, would it, are we going to rotate by day? Are we going to have kids coming a.m. and p.m.? And it's one of the reasons we asked you this question in our parent survey that you received a couple of days ago. If you haven't had the opportunity to do that survey yet, I really want to encourage you to do that. We're getting a lot of feedback, really great feedback from our parents about some of these ideas. And we have, I think, I think close to 500 surveys returned already. So we appreciate that, um, that information from you. And then this yellow box here really is about the short-term closures, that if we were in a blended learning model and we're required to close, can we pivot easily to closing schools returning to online learning fully, and then again, coming back. And how do we prepare for that? So let's just, let me talk about each one briefly, just a little bit more. So 100% face-to-face, that left side of the continuum, we know we miss, and I know you miss sending them to us. <laughs> and um, we know that for all students to return to school in a pre-pandemic way, that that opportunity is not gonna present itself to us as fast as we would like. Um, and, and we know that even with the best online learning, our students are still at risk of academic learning loss when they're not with us every day. So that's really heavily on our mind. We know that as far as a state um, stay-at-home order has been lifted and 
when cases in the county come down a certain amount and, and that physical distance requirings have been removed and there's no limits on large group gathering, that's about the time that we're going to be able to fully open schools the way we're all accustomed to school being. So we know that that's not likely to happen um, as quickly as we would like it to. So we need to be prepared uh, to think through what are the other what are the other opportunities for learning and the environments that we want to create um, so that we can nimbly. Learn. So I talked a little bit about blended learning already. You can imagine uh, the 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 planning for. Uh, uh, a blended learning, staggered schedules and social distancing and putting the safety pr protocols in place that will be necessary. This is the most challenging um, to prepare for. Uh, the implications for us uh, as schools and as an employer, you know, we are the largest employer in Fallbrook with close to 800 employees. For us as an employer and as a school system are enormous to move to this kind of model, um, but we're prepared to do it and we're working on it. We're working. Some of the questions that we have to be considering, what would arrival and dismissal look like? Uh, how do we deal with recess, lunch, and passing periods with social distancing in mind? Uh, how might we need to modify the instructional day? And what does it mean for transportation? You know, we have 82 passenger buses and some of the recommendations that exist right now on school buses um, is we can anticipate we can really only get 12 to 14 students on an 82 passenger bus six feet apart. So I'm reading now that maybe some of the transportation uh, guidelines are going to be continue to be modified over time, but we're watching that carefully. What does it mean for PE? and extracurricular activities. And one of the biggest pieces and that's heavily on our mind is childcare. Because we know that many of you work during the day while your children are at school. And it's an important part of your life. Uh, that school, you know that your children are safe with us in a beautiful learning environment while you're at work. And so childcare is, is top of mind for us as well. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the planning we're doing with that. And then after all that is said, that doesn't even think, that doesn't even, all those things don't even take into consideration our passionate commitment to the learning and the academic growth of your kids. So it's, this is complex. And um, we have all, we have so many smart people that are working on it uh, and know, and thinking through how to answer these questions. All right, short-term closures. We can absolutely predict that that will happen and that we have to be ready for it. And how do we prepare our students and you uh, to move between being school being open and school being closed? So we're thinking about those plans carefully uh, and be um, really prepared in a way that we're flexible and ready to make changes when we're asked and required to do those things. And last, 100% uh, remote learning. Uh, the most important thing here is we have learned a lot over the last uh, several months, almost three months, it's hard to believe, about the, um, everyone learning from home. And we know that there were some things that went really well, and we also know we have things that we really can improve upon. And so we've sent a survey uh, to you, and, and thank you so many of you for helping us with the feedback about how distance learning went for you over the last almost three months. And um, we appreciate your feedback. We're really looking to, to improve because when and if we need to move to 100% remote learning in the fall, we want to we wanna have taken all of what we've learned to incorporate us into what we're doing so that we're really effective at doing it. We are right now currently working to make changes and modifications and improvements to our homeschool program, knowing that many of you will have an interest in keeping your kids at home 100% time. And we want to be prepared to accommodate that and have a beautiful 100% homeschool option available, available for families who want to, to utilize that. So 
here's the thing I've said to everyone in our school district and what I want to share. Um, I have been the superintendent here in Fallbrook for almost a decade. And I know that we have the most talented leaders, teachers, and staff members who are working uh, uh, hard and thoughtfully right now to think through all of these considerations. Um, and we're, we're very optimistic. While we can, it can sometimes feel a bit daunting, if I'm honest, uh, to say to you that um, we have a spirit of we can do it. Uh, and we really are looking forward to your feedback and your input to help us do it. So I just want to share with you briefly the, just the nature of the, of the planning that's going on, given all the things that I just shared with you. This grid right here represents the number of planning groups that are currently going on in our school district. We have leaders, principals, assistant principals, teachers, support classified staff, community members, and soon parents that are going to be, um, that are currently and will be working on these planning groups now and throughout the summer from what we're doing for transportation, what, what can we anticipate and provide for through with regard to childcare? What do we have for our technology? How do we, what do we need to be doing for our counseling services that we know uh, need to address some of those social emotional challenges that we know we want to be there to support our kids? Um, so facilities in the blue box, we have a whole team of people thinking through what modifications need to be made in our facilities. Uh, so I share this with you so that, uh, so you can see the complexity of what's involved in planning for school opening uh, and for you to know that what a thorough and uh, forward thinking approach our district is taking to really focus in on creating um, a school opening that is um, going to be uh, the best and safest for your children and for our employees. So these are the next steps. And then I'm gonna, we're almost done. These are the next steps. We have planning teams that are meeting now. Uh, we're working, uh, we've sent out a parent survey to you and I'm gonna encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunity to do that, please do. Um, we're working very closely with the San Diego County Office of Education and public health officials to monitor the spread of COVID-19 in San Diego County and carefully monitoring the state reopening phases because that's where, you know, that's gonna be the thing that guides what we're able to do. Um, and in the meantime and in the background, we're ordering supplies and equipment. We're working on hiring uh, extra custodians to be there to support our schools and cleaning our schools. Um, and then we're going to be looking at piloting some of those procedures, uh, particularly related to facilities and the cleaning and things like that um, over the summer. Those are the things that we're working on now. And I'm going to just say it one more time. Nothing is more important to us than the health and safety of your children and our employees. Um, as a mom of two children, um, I, and, and I come at, at this uh, the way our governing board members do, our employees do. We care and want our schools to be the kinds of places we would want our own kids to come to. And as a mom and as an educator for a really long time, um, we are so committed to the safety and well-being of your children the same way I would want someone committed to mine. And so that is a heartfelt commitment that we have to you. And we're going to work hard to plan, to plan for that to happen. So I'm going to close with a couple of things. Number one, we miss you. It feels like riding, on, riding the bike and there's no one behind us. And we can't wait to get your kids and you back in our schools in a, in a safe manner. Um, I want to let you know that we're going to be providing you with updates this summer 
Uh, we're going to continue to communicate with you. We're going to be providing emails and phone calls and updates on our websites. We may reach out to you again with surveys as we know more. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to help us by, com by completing surveys if we send them, uh, because your feedback is important to us and we're taking it seriously. You know, we can anticipate that we're going to have a range of opinions about what we should be doing as a school district. You know, we're a very diverse place with lots of different ideas about what is appropriate, what's desired, the things people would like us to do. Uh, and we can already see that there is a broad range of difference in the thinking of the parents of our school district and in our community about how to move forward in a time that no one has ever experienced anything like this before. So I just want to reassure you that we're going to first and foremost, keep your students' safety uh, top of mind, number one priority, knowing that we really want to get your kids back in school. Uh, but I'm going to ask you to really think and think through and understand that we are going to have a broad diversity of opinion about what we should be doing. And we want to take your thinking and your best ideas into consideration as well. We want to help meet the needs of you and your children, as we always do. And we're going to do our best to try to meet the, the needs of the most people possible. Uh, and if we can work together in a really open-minded way and recognizing that we all, there's many different opinions here about what should happen. Um, I think we'll set really good examples for our students, for our children, for your children in recognizing and honoring diversity of opinion, um, but that everybody is, has the most positive intention uh, to come forward and create the best possible solution that we can. Um, and we're committed to doing that for you. We'll post the FAQs from tonight's webinar. Thank you for including some Q&A tonight. If you've sent us some questions in our Q&A box, we appreciate that. Uh, we're gonna post uh, responses to your questions on our website. We, we also have a comment and question form on our website that we'll make really out, up, up front and obvious for you. So that if you have some to communicate with us, we're happy and eager to have you do that as always. Um, and, in, and then finally, let me just say this. Uh, for parents who have eighth graders in your house, uh, and if eighth graders are listening in, we want to say congratulations to you. Uh, this is absolutely not how we imagined the end of your eighth grade year would go. You know, I became the superintendent in Fallbrook when our eighth graders were in kindergarten. And when I think about that period of time and watching your kids during my years here, uh, watching your kids grow up and learn and grow and become the adolescents and young adults that they're becoming, um, it is, I am more proud of that. And I am so happy that they are, um, they are resilient and smart and hardworking. And while this is not what anyone wanted to have happen, we're so proud of them. So for everybody who's listening, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock, we're gonna be posting our two big promotion videos, our online live or kind of live promotion tomorrow uh, at nine o'clock. And I would encourage you to log in at nine o'clock and watch the beautiful faces of our eighth graders and the teachers and the leaders who have worked with them and poured their love and heart into them. Um, and all the teachers and people who work in the school district, you know, we look at our eighth graders and we know that we're all a small piece of a puzzle that comes together to create a learning environment for your kids. And when we see eighth graders go off, we have this combination of feeling a little sad, but then so excited because this is why we come to work, is to be 
um, that important part of your family's life, which is your children's school. So congratulations to our eighth graders. Parents, I wanna thank you. We wanna wish you a really healthy and safe summer. Know that we're gonna keep communicating with you. And I want you, if I can just encourage you and, and, and let you know that I hope that you feel confident and know that we are going to be carefully thinking about how we get our schools back um, in a way that's safe, uh, but we know that um, school is such an important part of your children's lives and we're here to make it a really positive one in whatever manner um, and however that looks as we start our new school year. So thank you everybody. Sending my best wishes and prayers to your family. I hope that you stay well. Uh, continue to send us your questions and comments and I hope you have a beautiful summer. Thank you, everybody.